Chapter 5, Monday, August 26th, 1985. Lunch period is rowdy. There's a long line of freshmen spilling out of the cafeteria and into the hallway. Apparently, we all spent too long with our peer mentors. Were we all fascinated by them, or was that just me? I joined a line of bustling students, craning my neck over multiple heads to see if I can spot Mike, Dustin, or Max. I see Dustin's hair and t-shirt before registering that he and Mike are already in the cafeteria. They're seated at a, at a table alone. They're looking around, likely for me, maybe also for Max. I wave, stretching so they can see me, but they don't. Dustin's too busy writing something in his folder, and Mike is spinning a faded dodecahedron die from an old D&D set. I step out of the line and head for them. Maybe I can leave my stuff at the table and get back in line for my food. As I approach a group of boys, upperclassmen, from the, the way they look of them, saunter past their table. They look like trouble. One of them whispers something to another, watching Dustin. The receiving dude passes on the message to another, and soon all of them begin to snicker. Then one leans in closer to Dustin, which is too busy writing to notice, and Mike is too focused on spinning his die to see what's happening. Nice perm, the boy says into Dustin's ear, then pulls at his hair. Dustin jumps, startled. The boy begins to ruffle his hair, and Dustin swipes, trying to get his, his hands away. Mike gets involved, and his die spins, skittering off the table and onto the floor. One of the boys kicks it into the opposite corner of the room. Everyone at the adjacent tables laughs. I slow down, clenching my fist for the, for the third time today. Memories from middle school bubble up interplaying with the, with the scene before me, getting beat up for winning the science fair, for being in the AV club, for being a freak. It's almost like we never met. It's almost like we never left, sorry. Like we're trapped in a world with no escape. It hurts even more because no one tells the boys off. The laughter just increases now that the others are looking up and taking notice. Maybe they think we deserve it. We're only a bunch of nerds, after all. Eventually, the boy lets go of Dustin's hair, laughing as he leaves with his, with his squad. Mike stares and, and daggers at them, but stays put because they're real big, real tall. Even Dustin, often the first to open his big mouth, gives the boys a long look and decides against speaking. I bet it's running through both their minds now. Elle's not here to save them this time. I bet it'll hit Mike harder, knowing she might be gone for good. It makes me feel even more guilty for waiting until the upperclassmen leave to approach the table. Dustin has patted his hair back into place, and their long faces have settled. Hey, I say, trying to be cheerful. They don't need to know that, um, that I saw what just happened, and I don't need to make them feel embarrassed that I did. What's with the long lines? How do you guys get food? Showed up early, says Dustin, back to his Don plus self. I hear that's the only way to not spend all of lunch period in line. Didn't, you peer, didn't your peer mentor tell you that? Mine did. Before I can respond, Dustin's moved on. Anyway, I was just telling Mike that I hear the head of Hellfire, this stoner named Eddie Munson. I hear he's uh, intense. Your, your peer mentor t told you this too? Of course, says Dustin. I asked all the proper questions. Anyway, listen, with this Eddie guy, I'm thinking we have to like declare our intentions early. He doesn't sound like someone with a lot of patience. He might not have the luxury of waiting until the next week to sign up um, at the extracurricular showcase. He leans forward. I'm thinking, what if we get our names in early, like today? Don't be silly, Dustin, they say. Hellfire is not going to get full, full anytime soon. Tell him, Mike. Mike just, Mike just shrugs. There's a part of me that's happy for this rooting, Mike. The shadow of the scrappy in-your-face Mike I've known all my life. Mopey Mike is like an upside-down version of him, complete with the negative vibes even when he's just sitting there, doing nothing. But a part of me remembers my friend's still in there somewhere. 
He might be too stubborn to admit it, but he needs our help dealing with this L and Will moving situation. I put a hand over Dustin's scribbling to stop him. I love Dustin, but gosh, he can be so aloof sometimes. Why don't we just breathe for a moment? I pantomime breathing in and out. Both of them look at me quizzically. Listen, how about a big movie night this weekend? Your dad finally put the TV in the VHS player in your basement, right, Mike? Dustin, you can um, go to the family video and rent something good. Two movies, maybe. Max and I can pick up some pop. And Mike, you can get some popcorn. Just us and movies. All night. I clap my hands. What you say? Yeah, my dad's not going to like that, says Mike. Your, dad's, your dad doesn't like anything, I say. True, Mike agrees. But I'm not sure my mom's going to be happy either. She's not going to let Max stay over. Say girls are not allowed. Well, I think we can argue that there's four of us, so if they're worried about making out and stuff, that's not going to happen, right? Instead, they stare at me. They're going to be called, they're, they're going to be, that's going to be your call, Chief, says Dustin. Wow, ooh, disgusting, I say. I would never just make out in the middle of, the, of movie night. That'd be gross. I turn to Mike. But does that mean we're on? Maybe, he says finally. I'll ask Nancy if she can, Help soften my parents up. We'll have to bribe her, though. Fine, I'll pay, if that's what it takes to have one fun night. Guys, says Dustin, not to rain on the movie night parade, but I think we we should be talking this Hellfire sign up seriously. Hellfire can wait, Dustin, I cut in. Besides, it's not the worst thing in the world if we don't get in. We'll simply find something else. Mike and Dustin look at one another then burst out laughing. You're kidding, says Justin. You're ki you've got to be kidding. What do you mean, I say. Jay's words coming back to me now. We can try new things. Isn't that what we agreed? High school's all about? Like, what if I wanted to try out for the basketball team? Now they laugh even harder. Dustin's folder falls over, Dustin's folder falls over to the ground, and Mike wipes his eyes. Their laughter's directed at me but it's the first I've heard them laugh like this in a long time, especially after just what happened five minutes ago. It feels like they deserve it, so I let them um, make me the butt of the joke. Hey, you guys, if you've enjoyed this chapter, please smash that like button. I'd appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, I typically post <laughs> on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays, or whenever I can, usually. Um, Anyway, I hope, hope you guys are doing well. And click on the link for chapter 6.